Welcome to Evening Prayer. Through this period of Lent, we are journeying together towards Resurrection Day. It's getting closer and closer. But on this journey, we're thinking about exactly what Resurrection Day means and why it matters. To do that, we are praying through the Psalms together, ancient song lyrics and poems that express every conceivable human emotion to God. Tonight is Psalm 74, so if you haven't done so yet, grab your Bible or you can click the link with this video to go straight to the NIV version, which I'll be reading so we can say the words together. Uh, we want to mark this time out as special, a time when we give our attention to God and where we allow God to work in the deep places in our lives. So I'm going to light this candle as a reminder that Jesus is present with us. And maybe you'd like to light a candle where you are too. And then we're going to be still and then we're going to pray. So, we light this candle as a reminder of the presence of Jesus, the light of the world. We thank you. God, for your presence with us. Thank you, Father, for your deep love for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you long to speak to us. Thank you, Jesus, that you are leading us. Amen. What do we do when disaster strikes? When life-changing devastation turns our world upside down? How do we respond? And what happens to our faith? The theologian Walter Brueggemann called Psalm 74 a psalm of disorientation. Psalm 74 is song lyrics composed to reflect the reality of a traumatic upheaval. And Psalm 74 is a prayer expressing disappointment and anger at the idea that God allowed or caused trauma to occur. That feeling, that, uh, that anger is a very common response uh, to trouble. Even among people who say that they don't believe in God, uh, when something goes wrong, when they experience loss or things don't go to plan, um, there's still anger at God or fate or whatever it is we imagine is meant to stop bad things happening to us. So it's a very common human emotion to blame God or feel that God is at fault for uh, for our suffering. Um, the situation of Psalm 74 is a little bit different from that um, because Jerusalem has been destroyed, the temple has been flattened and the people of the kingdom have been killed or carried away to another country to live as slaves. It is about as big a trauma as you can imagine. The difference here is that to these people, God had spoken again and again, loudly and publicly through the prophets, warning the people collectively what would happen if they continued to oppress the poor and to worship idols, which sometimes would have included even child sacrifice. God warned them. God warned them that they would be brought low. And in the very same prophecies, God reminded them of what could happen if they returned to God's love and God's ways. So we are not in 
their shoes. Uh, for us, we can recall Jesus' words, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So when things don't go our way, um, when there are natural disasters, when we experience trauma, it's not God's judgment. It's just that the world's messed up. But we can still connect with the emotions of this psalm. We can use its words to cry out to God on behalf of suffering people. And it can help us to develop a reflex of dealing with trouble by turning to God in prayer. What do we do when devastation hits? We can recall the history of faith and look for the fulfilment of God's promises. So we're going to read these difficult words. And let's make them our prayer for ourselves and for all who suffer. We'll read together. O oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember the nation you purchased long ago. The people of your inheritance whom you redeemed. Mount Zion where you dwelt. Turn your steps towards these everlasting ruins. All this destruction the enemy has brought on the sanctuary. Your foes roared in the place where you met with us. They set up their standards as signs. They behaved like men wielding axes to cut through a thicket of trees. They smashed all the carved panelling with their axes, axes and hatchets. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the dwelling place of your name. They said in their hearts, we will crush them completely. They burned every place where God was worshipped in the land. We are given no signs from God. No prophets are left. And none of us knows how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garment and destroy them. But God is my king from long ago. He brings salvation on the earth. It was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the monster in the waters. It was you who crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave it as food to the creatures of the desert. It was you who opened up springs and streams. You dried up the ever-flowing rivers. The day is yours. And yours also the night. You established the sun and the moon. It was you who set all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Remember how the enemy has mocked you, Lord. How foolish people have reviled your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts. Do not forget the lives of your afflicted people forever. Have regard for your covenant because haunts of violence fill the dark places of the land. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and needy praise your name. Rise up, O oh God, defend your cause. Remember how fools mock you all day long. Do not ignore the clamour of your adversaries, the uproar of your enemies, which rises continually. God, we thank you for these words. Thank you 
that the Psalms give voice to every human emotion. We thank you, God, that you are the mighty God who created the world. And so, along with the psalmist, we pray a simple prayer. Do not forget the lives of your afflicted people forever. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and needy praise your name. We'll pray together using the words um, that we've been praying. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on your land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least, and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we'll finish with a blessing. These words from Psalm 4. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Amen.